प्रगा सर जीवन चीज गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर
start the meeting, sir? Shall we start the meeting, sir? A warm good morning to one and all present. I am Nandana Rajesh of Second DC Mathematics at HMS PB NSS College for Women, Naramankara. And I welcome you all to the second section of our webinar on the topic History of Mathematics. Today, we have Dr. Prakash Venkateshan, researcher, French institution of Pondicherry as our resource person. Now, he is working on a project headed by Dr. Senthil Babu on History of Vernacular Mathematics in Bid. Medieval South India, co-organized co by ETH, Zurich, and French Institution of Pondicherry. His specialization areas are manuscriptology and textual criticism, Tamil classical, bhakti, literature, and culture. Now, let me welcome Aditi Essa of Second DC Mathematics to deliver the welcome speech. Good morning, one and all present here. It is an honor to welcome all the distinguished personalities to this webinar. I first and foremost welcome the chief guest, Dr. Prakash Venkitation, and then I welcome the beloved principal, Dr. P. Jayashree Nam, head of the department N. Jayashree, IQAC convener, Dr. Shubha Arnayar. I welcome the coordinators of the program, Dr. Jayalakshmi Ji and Dr. Deepa S. Nair, and I welcome all the fellow students who are attending the session. Thank you, Aditi. Now I'd like to introduce the backbone of our college principal, Dr. P. Jayasri Ma'am, who was unable to attend the webinar due to some other engagement. Now I request the resource person, Dr. Prakash Venkateshan, sir, to deliver his speech. Thank you. Uh, I want to share my presentation. I think I cannot uh, share my presentation here. Can you please allow me to share my presentation? Yeah. Here I get. Can you see my presentation? Hello? Yes, sir, we can see that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me and uh, thanks for for all professors for students and all of the one who are joining here i would like to share my experience with uh, analyzing a mathematical text which was probably written in the medieval tamil nadu medieval centuries uh, titled muttukanakku You know, Muttakanaka is a kind of a manual which was written by a by an author, authored by Subramanian. Which is uh, which was used in merchandise practice for long. You know, pearl history was uh, followed here in Gulf of Manar from early centuries. But this pearl history, what kind of merchandise has been used? What kind, what kind of uh, uh, mathematical relation have been used? We don't have any such uh, example for that. But we have only uh, this text, uh, which is titled Muttukanak. As we know, from 1960s, this merchandise practice is no longer being practiced now. It was ended by 1960, so we don't have any 
reference or evidence are, are the people who are living now. So we are pushed to rely on the ancient references only. With these references, how can we understand the mathemat mathematical practice which was uh, registered in this text? Uh, we've got one manuscript from uh, uh, from the institute where I'm working, French Institute of Pondicherry, and another from uh, Thirumanandabram ORI. I like to uh, thank them for allowing us to use their resource. So with these two manuscripts, how can we understand the mathematical practice which was followed in medieval South India or medieval Tamil Nadu and especially southern Tamil Nadu, uh, especially the uh, regions around Tutukudi and uh, uh, northern Sri Lanka. It's really difficult, but how can we understand this? There are, uh, if we look back, if we trace back uh, to the history of pearl industry, we, are, we have a few references from inscriptions uh, through travelers' notes, colonial reports, and also uh, the references from various literatures and folk songs. Some books which were written by uh, scholars in the early 20th century. This, through these uh, references, we can understand how this merchandise practice have been uh, well organized and the people who are involved in this merchandise practice. But one thing we have to understand, the units which have been used in, the, in this merchandise practice and what the present uh, numerical value of those ancient uh, Tamil mathematical units. Relating this to, we can understand how and uh, what kind of parallel uh, numerical usage have been followed in ancient Tamil Nadu, uh, especially in medieval Tamil Nadu. Taking this into consideration, uh, we have some inscriptions. You can see a uh, Chola inscriptions, which denotes only two units, Kalanju and Manjadi. Kalanju, which is equal to around, uh, uh, I think, four, four point some grams. And Manjadi is uh, it's just point two grams. And there are colonial reports. Uh, from uh, from 18th century onwards. I have shown you a colonial report from 1905, which was published in uh, government, uh, uh, government of Madras. And uh, you, ha you have one another text, Muthu Sebu Kanak. Uh, this text was published in 1881. We have only this text as a, as a reference to understand how the poll have been uh, mathematically uh, valued and numbered. And this is the one important text which we have uh, by S. Arunachalam, which was published uh, in Annamalai University in 1952. This text gives the entire view of uh, what happened in pearl fishery in the Tamil coast. But uh, we have only very less amount of, uh, of discussion on mathematics in this text, pearl mathematics. So let us think about uh, from if we go back, uh, if we trace back, what kind of mathematical units have been used in this merchandise practice? If we look back, there are only two mathematical units, Kalanju and Manjari. Uh, the earliest reference for us uh, on 11, early 11th century, probably 1001 or 1002, I think, uh, the Chola King Rajaraja one in his uh, inscription where he has donated uh, uh, an amount of pearl to uh, to the big temple in Tanjavur. Uh, he mentions how much uh, the uh, the number of pearls and how much it valued uh, with with these two numericals, Kalanju and Manjari. If we trace back to what is this, uh, uh, these two values only being used in history or any other units were used, uh, also used in valuing pearl. If you trace back this uh, into our history, we don't have any such reference uh, other than this to Kalanji and Manjari. But uh, with the help of the colonial reports, we can see there is one another unit which was also used to calculate 
uh, pull to value pull. Otherwise, in, in other words, that is several value. But we can ask a question here. Uh, what, why, and when this several unit have been introduced? Why they have to invent or discover a unit which was absent in earlier days? With the help of inscriptions, the historical data shows only two units which was used in uh, uh, in valuing or numbering or weighing pearl, Kalanji and Manjari. But if we ask this question, why a special unit should be introduced? So each unit has an historical uh, importance but why every mathematical unit has its own social influence when we talk about uh, mathem mathematical units and its influence with the social movement then we can probably find an answer to uh, to get to at least uh, get nearer to understand why a certain mathem mathematical unit has been discovered or been used, practiced, while asking this Cebu value, Cebu unit. According to when we refer inscriptions, Kalanji and Manjadi have been used, these two units have been used uh, only for low quality pearls. You can see uh, 37 pearls weighed 8 Manjadi. So 37 pearls, uh, either both in Kalanji and Manjari, have cost quite a money. You have seen from, from, from a Chola inscription here. And another uh, inscription data we have here is 378 pearls weighed 11 Kalanji and uh, 3 fourth Manjari. That's, uh, that, uh, that's cost 13 uh, and uh, 13 and quarter and Arikal. That's the Arikal 1 by 8 uh, money value. So these two units were used uh, throughout history to value and measure, to measure and value low quality pearls. Uh, according to history, we have more than 30 kinds of pearls. In that, in those 30 kinds of pearls, only six to seven pearls are high quality pearls. We don't know how those high quality pearls have been uh, measured and valued. But we have historical reference, uh, references for only low quality pearls uh, used with the help of Kalanji and Manjadi, these two units, they have measured and valued. So let us ask a question here. Let us raise a question. Uh, why Seve has been introduced? Whether to value high quality pearls, then if we ask uh, the question, how in this 2000 years, because we have references from Sangam literature, uh, which is dates, dates back to uh, BC, early centuries of BCE, uh, before common era, we have references that a certain community from, uh, from as early uh, from that period, Parava community have been involved in this uh, pearl uh, diving and fishing uh, pearl industry for 2000 years. Then, why a certain unit which was not uh, being used in earlier days but was introduced and discovered in medieval mathematical uh, tradition in Tamil Nadu? Since we don't have any historical data with this several unit, uh, can we, uh, shall we assume that this is the unit only wa was discovered in, uh, in 11th or 12th century? We don't know. We don't have any answer. So while analyzing a mathematical unit with its historical reference and uh, the people who are behind or who are involved in valuing or measuring or what kind of historical practice, mathematical practice have been followed with certain mathematical unit 
when we trace back when we try to trace back this we can understand how historically a mathematical unit have been discovered and how the people tried to use it and practiced it and what kind of social hierarchy allowed people to practice it so these questions will make us to understand a certain unit to uh, understand it and to value it in this present contemporary world so as a pearl as a soul substance this unit several was used for just only one uh, pearl industry for merchandise practice then when we talk about the historical growth of this mathematical units then we can understand why sevu was introduced uh the mathematical uh, formula we will uh, talk about later how the sevu was uh, valued uh, sevu is not a measuring unit like kalanji or manjari but sevu is a kind of a value unit to give a certain value to uh, qualified uh, quality quality pearl high, high quality pearl then now we can raise a question why a text muthu kanakku uh, a text which was uh, return around 14 or 16 centuries we don't know we, we don't know it because we don't have a, a, a strong evidence to say the the period of uh, the authorization of this text with the uh, with this math multiplication table like uh, kalanji and manjari and the sebu value of uh, those measurements whether this is a pedagogic practice which was involved Uh, which was used in southern tamil nadu uh, in schooling whether they taught uh, this text in a school we don't know or which was this text was used as a manual in a, in trade practice in southern tamil nadu let us say uh, an assumption here every mathematical measurement or unit was involved has been followed in certain a uh, trade or certain uh, value have been given to a unit only with social movement so this trade pearl trade uh with the historical record we can say it has traced back to 2000 years but a manual should be in need when there a new community was involved in trade in trade in trade practice so what kind of new community were involved we don't know but in early times it was tamil uh, tamil people and also uh, malayalam people they were involved in this trade practice uh, uh, in this gulf of mannar they should have known this measuring system of pearl for over centuries but why there is a need to write a mathematical text like this multiplication table for practice so when we raise this question if this trade was only um, between the local people and our local merchandise then there will be no need to record they are measuring uh, a table or mathematical uh, amount of uh, thing only after the migrants from outside uh like uh like later in later times uh, muslims or christians after they also involved from arabs because uh, pearl practice is uh, not, uh, was not only belong uh, to this gulf wherever gulf uh, is situated we can see uh the pearl trade have been followed there uh in bahrain in arab uh in arab countries Uh, in in india and also in many places in 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 world there are uh, this such practice have been uh, employed and followed and interestingly uh, same kind of uh, pearl diving was followed in many uh, countries uh, uh, similar to tamil nadu similar to uh, arab countries and bahrain and uh, in many places same kind of practice have been followed for pearl diving and to catching pearls 
but we don't know whether same kind of mathematical practice have been followed because we can't say that uh, but using this kalanjari and manjari and uh, later with several unit after the arrival of muslims and christian christians who were involved in this pearl trade we assume that there was a need arisen to write a text to write a table to help as a manual to help who were involved in trade so let us ask a question here is this common to all this manual was common to all that means uh, uh, the labor the laborers who were involved in uh, in pearl diving are the people who are involved in this pearl trade uh from from the lower practice to the to the higher one is this common to all we don't know uh but an interaction an interesting uh, uh data we can find from colonial record that when a pearl diver when he snap when he take a pearl out of uh, uh out of the out of an oyster before he come up come out from um uh from the water then that pearl is belong to him so somehow the value of pearl the me the measurement was known to all people but we don't know whether this manual or whether uh it probably think as a pedagogic practice was taught to all but only for the people certainly we can say uh uh because we know all that india is a hierarchical uh, society so this pedagogical text if we assume this as a pedagogical text then we we can say uh this was taught to a certain community who are involved in education and uh, who are who are privileged to have uh, education and all but in later period when uh, murmans are labais murman is the term used in uh, colonial uh, colonial reports that's why i have uh, used the same term uh, the muslims when they involved in valuing pearls according to uh, colonial records only labais were involved only muslims were involved uh, in valuing pearls measuring it weighing it measuring it and valuing it so let us ask a question here early in earlier times who were the people who are uh, involved uh, in valuing and measuring pearls what kind of units they used what kind of we have kalanji and manjari only kalanji and manjari but other than kalanji and manjari how this practice have been followed we don't know so uh, do the people who were involved in pearl diving were aware of this mathematical practice no who are the readers so for each mathematical text or for each uh, mathematical unit there is a social background which is lying behind that's what gives us the complete clear precise understanding of how a mathematical unit was used was practiced in certain society and social community we can probably uh, say this was included in a curriculum but we don't know then we can see how this manjari have been measured uh i have given a a picture from a report uh, this was by g wayne uh, who was an inspector who inspected uh, pearl banks in 19th century uh, this uh, report uh, this was not uh, this was not a report this was an article uh, earlier uh, he lectured this article to a certain community uh, in in ceylon in in sri lanka afterwards this was published as an article in royal asiatic society uh, journal i've just read this for uh, to give a, an understanding of how they measured and how they valued pearl so the weight in manjari of the pearl is reduced to a fraction having 320 as its denominator so uh in india according to uh, our our tradition every thing 
have been reduced to 1 by 320 that is mundiri following this multiplying mundiri with uh, the constant uh, 1 by 320 constantly they will multiply 1 by 320 that is mundiri again and again to get the value 1 up to 1 that is killed by ilakam that was the term, term used in my mathematical uh, so the numerator of the fraction is multiplied by itself to find a square value of it so 3 fourths of the square is taken the result is divided by the pulse if there is more than one then the result uh, the result is then divided twice consecutively by the number 320 which gives as the final result the chevu of the weight of weight in the form of a fraction with 320 as its denominator as required so according to wayne so this is the uh way to value a pearl to to measure and to value a pearl so this measuring value the way this measurement according to him it is equal to rule of 3 in modern terms you can see in the in the last four lines to facilitate their own operation they have certain tables so this is the table muttu uh, kanakku that uh, what i have uh, put on you i put in front of you uh, certain tables constructed once for all so from this term constructed once for all it means it is common to all but we have to again raise a question but uh, we'll, we'll come back um, to it later and besides this something like a multiplication table to 320 times which one one may sometimes hear them repeating to themselves so it is uh, they are uh, mug up uh, the multiplication table so to use to use uh, the table effectively Uh, in trade but all these aids are quite unnecessary to anyone who can work an ordinary sum in rule of 3 uh, a rule of 3 would have not been known uh, here in earlier times but this rule of 3 was used in different way what we the term rule of 3 could be the new uh, from 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 western world but this rule of 3 was used also here in this culture in their own uh, way of understanding so what i think here at the time of trade this mathematical table could be uh, can possibly help for uh, the persons who were involving in measuring and valuing the pearls to keep uh, to remain it in their memory to uh because of uh, uh, one pull uh could possibly weigh uh, some some point some 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 milligrams that's all so to value to to give a value to each pull or the number of pulls one has to weigh it and one has to multiply with the measurement and uh according to the market price they have to value a pearl on that day so these things this it's it's a laborious job to do in that place and it is a uh, time consuming so this mathematical table would possibly be a much help to uh, the persons who were involving in uh, in pearl trade to give a precise value of uh of pulse through the measurement kalanji and manjari and later squaring the value one can get the sevu value uh, with the help of that sevu they find the value of the pole of the tail so let us uh, make it in short in modern uh, notation let us take x the weight measure of a pole that is kalanji and manjari should be squared y to find the 3/4 of it and b is the market price of a qualified pole and a is the value of a pole of the day needs to be find so this kind of uh, mathematical practice was followed uh from 10th century onwards according to the according to evidence but it's this back to sangam 
error. What I put forward in front of you all that each mathematical text or each mathematical unit has a social background to understand when or why a certain unit was used and who are the people who involved in that practice and what kind of pedagogic way or curriculum have been used to teach and how this mathematical unit played a certain role in this community. So each mathematical unit, when there is a question, historically, we can understand how this community have been traveled, the, tra the trajectory path of uh, this community to the present world can be understood possibly through this mathematical uh, practices. Thank you. Hello. Sir, can we move on to the QA section? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. But uh, I don't know, there is a. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I finished my lecture now. So it's the. Uh, Hello? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. My aim is uh, to put forward that how a, a, a mathematical unit can be understood socially and historically. And who are the people uh, who are involved uh, in such practice and how we understand our own history through mathem mathematical unit and text. So that's what uh, I put forward. With my experience. Okay, sir. But I don't know how to shift back. Uh... Oh, okay. And I think. Uh, through discussions, I think we can discuss more about uh, this certain unit and its historical background and uh, how to understand the mathematical unit through history and through social uh, community level. Uh, Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. So, can I ask you one thing? Yeah, please. So can you relate the uh, relation between history of Tamil mathematics and Malayalam mathematics? Like, do they have any connection? Uh, probably, yes. Uh, I don't know uh, the mathematical uh, tradition in Malayalam, but I believe, yes, uh, that, that, that should, uh, there is a relation, uh, strong relation between uh, uh, Tamil and Malayalam mathematics. Uh, we do have uh, texts Kanakadiharam, which is similar uh, to both this tradition, uh, both in Tamil and uh, Malayalam. Uh, yesterday, I think uh, you, all, uh, you all listened to Roy's uh, talk. He put forward a, a mathematical tradition in Malayalam, historically. 
and he is working on uh, kanakadhikaram uh, uh, we are we two are working in the same project uh, historical uh, history of vernacular uh, vernacular mathematics kanakadhikaram which is common to both these cultures there are certain difference uh, because of the cultural difference and uh, uh, and social uh, difference but the mathematical units and mathematical the way of understanding mathematics and usage uh, in practice it's probably same and thank you that's a good question thank you sir Uh, good morning sir good morning sir uh, i have a question yes please uh, in uh, in the tamil kanakadhikaram there are a number of sort of riddles by name muthu kanaku where yes 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 uh, in merchant presents a number of uh, pearls to the king yes or the ruler and the king asks him uh, to divide them equally among his uh, wives in such a way that the number is the same and the value is also the same yes sir. it seems to be uh, there seems to be various variations of the same thing yes yes uh, how is it so popular uh, why are there so many variations uh Could you say something that's, that's an important question uh the variations yes we do have variations in uh, in different matter in different kanakadhikarams uh but what i think here it's the riddles are a kind of uh, keeping are practicing one measurement or practicing value through memory so that is the uh, use of uh, riddles kanakadhikaram uh, when we uh, let us take kanakadhikaram there are many riddles have been uh, 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 given to us and given to the society through how students can use the mathematical uh, uh, ma measurements numeric numericals to practice it through memory so this riddles helps them to understand uh, and to practice the mathematics in their in their daily life so i think the difference uh, the mutte kanaka which has been mentioned in kanakadhikaram which is not uh, equal to this mutte kanaka because uh, the text which i mentioned here is a it's a table but the mutte kanak mentioned in uh, in kanakadhikaram it's a riddle both are so the same it's a, no 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 sir this mutte kanak is a ma mathematical table sir okay uh the mutte kanak which was uh, uh, used which was mentioned in kanakadhikaram that was a riddle that a, riddle. Uh, a merchant yes a merchant who has a, a number of uh, pearls he has to uh, dissect uh, he has to deliver uh, that pearl to a certain number of persons uh, let us take uh, if there are 80 pearls and this 80 pearls has to be uh, delivered to three persons equally how can uh, he do that so this is a kind of a riddle uh, arised uh, by a king to a pearl merchant and how much value should be given uh, equally uh, to the uh, to that pearls how much he has to pay the king has to pay to the merchant so this is a riddle so through uh, making a riddle students can understand uh, understand the riddle easily and uh, understand the mathematical context easily mm -hmm. so that is the value of uh, making it into a riddle so uh, if we it is easy to teach uh, as a, as a story as a riddle as a uh, as a people who involve uh, in a in a in a in such a practice so that's why i think there's a, there are differences to give more and more precise uh, or different values to one such uh, practice thank you thank you and that's why we can see uh, there are differences between uh, kanakadhikaram texts even though uh, the, the texts are copied from uh, from one or two uh, mother 
uh, mother text we can see uh, differences in kanakadiharams because of this uh, uh, invention of teaching invention of various teachers i believe uh, through the through through uh, through references i believe uh, there is there are uh, there were no one certain curriculum was followed throughout uh, in entire tamil speaking area or entire malayalam speaking area each teacher has to make his own uh, curriculum with the help of uh, available texts and available resources while making a curriculum he has uh, involved uh, in adding some more uh, new ideas of his own to teach his own students so that could probably one another reason for differences we can see now in kanakadiyaram uh, manuscripts Hello, sir. Um, I have a oh, question yes, for please. you. Please. Um, so, uh, to what extent do you think this mathematical knowledge and practices manage to ascertain the dominance of these indigenous Afrin communities over the ones from other countries? That is, these mathematical measurements, or uh, if you were to consider from what what I understood, uh, mm -hmm. these were indigenous to certain communities. They were mm -hmm. the ones who knew more about it. If you were talk about pearl, pearl traders, then they were mm -hmm. the more who knew about these measurements. So they didn't manage, because uh, our society was divided into different hierarchies, they yes. didn't manage to widen the disparities. Or do you think this brought together the society as a whole? What did it do? Did it, do, or did it have more positive impacts or more of negative impacts? No, we can't say whether... Uh, uh, with the help of this uh, mathematical uh, texts, we can't say uh, it's a positive impact or negative impact because every text has a role in the society. Uh, every mathematical, either mathematical text or a literature or uh, any kind of text has a role uh, in the society. Each community, because uh, each text has rooted from the social movement, whether a positive impact or a negative impact, invention or discovery of uh, one unit or uh, discovering certain mathematical measurement to be used in practice for certain community, that should probably give a give and make, make make an impact into uh, the economical uh, background of uh, of that society otherwise discovering units like sevu uh, what i what, what we seen uh, 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 just earlier doesn't make any sense if we, if it did uh, a negative impact uh, in uh, in a society but the history what we have right now is a kind of a history written by uh, uh, the up level in the hierarchy. But what we have to look over to uh, the history should be written according to the view of uh, people, view of communities, view of uh, the laborers. We don't know whether laborers, what kind of labor that they have employed. We have, uh, we don't know um, what we have right now is how 
this employment have been followed that's all but what kind of uh, suffocation that the pearl divers have seen have faced and uh, whether the um, the labor that has been given by the pearl diver has been taken into consideration for valuing pearl no we don't know that's the negative impact there the measurement have only given to the pearl but not the labor given by effort given by the people who are involved in that labor that should be taken into consideration thank you sir thank you Yes, please. Uh, can I ask you quickly? Yes, please. Uh, sir, do you think that the history of mathematics need to be a part of our present education or mathematical education in India? No, no, I don't. I don't get you. Sorry, please. Can you please come again? Uh, sir, uh, do yes. you think? Do you think that uh, we need to learn history of mathematics now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Can we the role of learning history of mathematics? in the present mathematical education system in india ah uh, uh, yeah that's an important question and also it has a political uh, background um the history of mathematics uh in the contemporary uh, view we put forward that vedic mathematics is the mathematics that has been followed earlier in indian system that's what uh, they have been um portraying now but uh instead vedic mathematics have been followed yes vedic math mathematics were, were, was also there but not only vedic mathematics there were mathematics uh, mathematical practices have been followed in various places in their own uh which has been rooted from the region that's what we say vernacular mathematics now uh we are concentrating that vernacular mathematics because that's uh, that is opposite to vedic mathematics vernacular mathematics is the kind of a practice used uh in in day to day life in day to day uh buying and selling day to day trade day, uh, day to day measuring uh, time measuring uh, uh practices but this history has not been put forward or portrayed in our curriculum in our present uh, syllabus uh this practice this practice is the only real practice that should that we should rely on to understand the movement the history of uh, social trajectories of our own society only through this reading and studying uh, vernacular mathematics that's what we say that is tamil mathematics or malayalam mathematics or uh, mathematics that has been followed in telugu kannada or in in odia while examining this mathematical practices we can understand the real history of uh, of us of the people who used that that mathematics we should follow we should focus on documenting this history which is which has been failed for over years in india but right now we only focus on uh, kind of a mathematics that uh, uh vedic mathematics which has been dominant uh, even today okay thank you sir thank you Uh, sir don't you think that more importance should be given to history of mathematics in the curriculum today yes more importance should be given because uh, uh, what we uh, kind of history what 
our history our, our, our history that has been portrayed in uh, in subjects that kings who ruled uh, in certain period in certain place what he has done uh, and what kind of importance he has given to the present uh, uh, society that's all but people's history has never been focused in the curriculum certain historians today uh, from ramila tapa and many other historians are focusing on people's history right now uh, from from 1950s i think from 1950s or even earlier uh, beginning from earlier they have started to looking on people's view that how history should be right should be written through mathematical practices only through ma mathematical practices we can understand the real history of the society of our own society either uh, either south or either north or uh, either language based society language based uh, uh, people we can only understand one while we analyze or examine the mathematical practice of the local people otherwise our history will be relied on only kings like uh, a certain king who ruled here who fought who won uh, a battle that's all but we don't know what the real history is otherwise we look on uh, the math mathematical practices which are which were followed in uh, in in a specific region just uh, for your information this several this unit never ever this unit ma'am was used in uh, any uh, any other mathematical practices this several unit was discovered only if only to use in this portrait how can we understand this sub unit when we know about this practice then we can go back to how this mathematical practice was used in portrait and what kind of uh, social influence what kind of uh, social uh, practices used with this ma mathematical unit while we analyzing this we can understand the pearl trade we can understand pearl trade we can understand the social movement related to this pearl trade which has dominated uh, over centuries which we, which was also one of the reason to colonize this region there are many reasons for this uh, the colonial period this is also one such thing it's portrayed to to rule the portrait of this uh, indian ocean by the british and also portuguese portuguese was the first who entered here and later dutch and later british and also french later france so through this one value we can uh, trace back to the history more precisely excuse me sir yes please can i ask you a doubt uh, yeah, it's just out of curiosity uh, about the availability of resources and how hard it was to find it for your uh, this research ah uh, that's uh, yeah uh, this really uh, hard thing uh, once we we came to know uh, the available of this manuscript muttakanak we were involved in searching what kind of evidence what kind of resource we can get through uh, already we know uh, one research work that's been, that has been done by yes arunachalam that uh, i have uh, uh, given uh, the example of that uh, in my presentation the history of uh, pearl fishing uh, 
uh, in of the Tamil coast. That's the only book which was available for the entire uh, history. But while searching for other resources, it's really difficult. We have phone called um, uh, various persons, various scholars to to know whether the people who were involved in pearl, uh, pearl trade are now, are living now. Whether we can uh, interview them, no, we can't get any, uh, uh, because the people who were involved in this trade are no more. So we have called, uh, we have um, tried to get resources from Sri Lanka, from, uh, from Tutukudi. They have contacted many persons. We, don't, we didn't get any idea of how to examine, how to analyze, how to under, understand this text. Because it talks about uh, a sieve. We don't know how this sieve has been used in practice to uh, uh, to dissect pearls. They have used uh, sieves from 20. Uh, sieves have been termed as uh, termed by number from 20 to 1000, according to the size of the holes of uh, that sieve. We have a text. We have uh, words, but how to understand these words through practice? No, we don't get any uh, detail. So we have tried to find uh, what are the colonial records which are available now. Tracing back to the colonial records, we found uh, from uh, from travelers Friar Jordanus who came here in 13th century and Marco Polo uh, through their records and uh, through inscriptions, uh, inscriptional data and uh, uh, they have we got a reference from uh, from Arab country uh, in a museum, they have they uh, exhi they exhibit a sieve that has been used there. So, with the help of that sieve and uh, with the colonial records, we understood probably yeah we can say probably understood how this text have been used in practice. So, through colonial records, uh, through traveler accounts, uh, with the help of uh, exhibitions, museums. And in inscriptional records, we tried to understand this text. It took us uh, over, 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 over a year to understand what this uh, text really means. It's a, it's a table. Only afterwards, we understood. Oh, this uh, table, which has been used in a trade, trade account, could be a manual, not a pedagogic uh, text. Not as a pedagogic text used in a, in a curriculum. There are many assumptions have been uh, put forward in this uh, understanding, but I hope that uh, those assumptions will help to, to continue our research. Uh, when we get more resources, then we can uh, precisely put forward the history of uh, this mathematical practice. Thank you. Sir, can we explore more about Riddle culture of India? Riddle culture? Uh, uh, that's a good question, but I don't know about the real culture. Uh, but uh, from my childhood, uh, I can say this: uh, that real culture it's a kind of a more uh, teaching practice. It was involved in more teaching practice. Uh, as I know, my grandmother or uh, uh, the people whom I see from my childhood, uh, what I talking about uh, from my age five. They ask uh, questions, or not, not kind of questions. It's kind of uh, uh, relating numbers through activating our our thinking. So that is the uh, aim of uh, riddle: activating our thinking, our ability uh, will rise when we ask a riddle because we think of. 
how we solve a problem through a riddle uh, from if we ask questions if we if we make a riddle to a child it will help them to think more and more on mathematical way because we are all surrounded by mathematics everything uh, so through riddle i think uh, i think this riddle culture is not only belong to our culture in various uh, indigenous cultures and aboriginal cultures have this kind of uh, riddle uh, uh, cultures have this riddle culture so this riddle culture make it's it's a kind of a, a teaching process it's a kind of a teaching process so it helps us to think and rethink and calculate uh, to activate our brain again and again to keep to keep on uh, thinking so that helps us in more and more ways And then, uh, is the question so over? Ma'am, could you Hello? wait for some minutes? I'm just a minute, ma'am. I will tell that. Hello, sir. Yeah, yes, please. Uh, sir, can you tell the exact idea of manuscriptology? No, uh, that's a uh, manuscriptology. It's it's a, it's a it's a vast area. Uh, like like today, we are writing papers. We have a uh, uh, ink filled uh, pen. But in earlier times, we don't have uh, such papers. We don't have ink or pen or anything. Uh, the available resource for them was palm leaves in India. Uh, but uh, when we take the rest of the cultures uh, in the world, the available according to their available resources, the writing. Uh, uh, element is it differs what we had here the available uh, uh, resource was palm leaf so they make that palm leaf to be written and to, to keep the palm leaf safe for years so they practiced some kind of uh, uh, biological or uh, they made palm leaf to be written with the help of a needle kind of a needle uh, rod kind of a rod they wrote uh, palm leaves they wrote their thinking what, what they thought the texts whatever the resources were available in the past they recorded it 
in the in palm leaves. The script they used uh, was varied according to their style of writing. Yes, script is one Tamil script or Malayalam script or Kannada script or uh, Telugu script or anything, but. The appearance of that script will be varied according to the style as of now. What manuscriptology teaches that while uh, analyzing a manuscript, one has to understand what kind of style the scriber have used. So, with the help of uh, that style, one has to try to read and understand the text and the differences. Of that uh, text. Manuscriptology, not only reading uh, the manuscript and also preserving it uh, out of uh, yes, out of uh, danger. Pern is reading and writing and preserving uh, palm leaf manuscripts and examining it and making it into an edition, critical edition. For that, one has to involve in various things, uh, historical data, one has to collect historical data which is related to uh, the text, uh, available uh, resources, editions, if that has been uh, published earlier and uh, examples from uh, various literatures and making it into a uh, pedagogical uh, sorry understanding the family of the trajectory of that manuscript let us take an example uh, either in Malayalam or Tamil if we take a, a manuscript of Kanakadiharam how many tradition how many uh, uh, life that this Kanakadiharam have seen what could be the original Kanakadiharam of this text we don't know let us take uh, uh, 14th century would be the first Kanakadiharam that was written or 13th century. In this 700 years, how many copies that has been taken? How many titles have been used? How many people have been involved in correcting that Kanakadiharam or, uh, or added? some ideas of their own into the Kanakadiharam text. We don't know. Let us take one original that the author was written. And from that original, let us uh, assume two copies that has been made by two students. Let's take that students with the two copies, a branch of their students will copy from that two, let us make four then. From that four, a branch will appear of their students. So these copies have been branched in many ways. Now what we have, uh, the Ganakadiharam text could possibly 100 years uh, age, 100 years of age. Uh, then we can think at most uh, Seven generation of this text, this Kanakadiharam, have been followed. So, with this present Kanakadiharam, we have to trace back to the original with the available manuscripts. How can we trace back? There are certain uh, uh, formulas, certain uh, theories to trace back uh, the original that, uh, according to the uh, notions. Uh, notations according to the notations used in a uh, uh, in a palm leaf in a scribe in a, in a, in a scribe's uh, uh, 
style and the history of writing style like uh, using dots using dots for consonants uh, in tamil you know uh, for consonants they use dots uh, uh, in in the upper it's a case usually in earlier times uh, they won't put dots in palm leaves because it will damage the palm leaf so they will write uh, they, they don't take out uh, the needle they just write uh, as a combined words so the reader has to know where the consonant is and where uh, the other letters are but in later periods in later 19th century uh, the writers have started to use dots to put consonants with dots so the palm leaves which are appear with uh, the dots has to be understand that it's a letter manuscript so with the help of these theories we have to trace back uh, with this family first we have to separate according to the families of manuscripts because uh, manuscripts uh, what the elder what i already said uh, from one original there are two copies and from the two copy there are four from that four eight it's, it's just an assumption it's a vertical uh, tra transmission there is there is also horizontal transmission is there horizontal uh, transmission is much more difficult to find uh, to trace back the original because horizontal transmission which is the copier will copy uh, from one uh, original and verify with another original and also verify with another original so if one copy involved in pre originals then it is really difficult to which family this copy belongs to but through subjecting it with, uh, through various uh, theories and various uh, uh, readings we can try to trace the original of uh, the available manuscript so what we do is uh, dissect and classify the families and through families with the similarities uh, available in the manuscripts we can trace back to original so that's what uh, we do in manuscriptology so with the help of uh, this theories we try to uh, critically edit edit edited uh, this muthukanak text with historical background and uh, social practice is the questions over shall we conclude the section sir yes please sir. Uh, during pre modern times jains buddhist and hindus are considered to be the crucial actors or active players in indian mathematics can you explain that oh uh, that's a that's a good question uh what what i know according to my knowledge and my reading jains were involved in uh, in, in 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 mathematics jains were uh, uh, because uh, the mathematics we used mostly in astrology in uh, in earlier times and also in uh, according to according to the evidences what we have jains more than uh, more than buddhists the jains were involved in uh, in mathematical practices according to the texts or according to the reading what what i understood hindus is a term is a later term we can't uh, uh, 
specify or we can't claim Hindus in past because Hindus is the term it's much later after colonial uh, period uh, let us take indigenous people yes they had a certain uh, certain mathematical practices but we don't know and we don't have any records of uh, those mathematical practices used by indigenous people that is uh, the people who, who had live, lived here what we have right now is inscriptions with some references of uh, mathematical uh, notations that's all the records the manuscripts and the colonial records is much later but earlier it was james because we have texts and uh, what they claim uh, in, from sanskrit it's vedic ma 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 vedic mathematics they claim that the vedic mathematics is much older but other than Vedic mathematics, it was uh, indigenous people and uh, Jains. They had uh, extensive knowledge of mathematics and mathematical practices. They followed. Yes. Sir, uh, what about the role of Muslim mathematicians? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, um, to be uh, honest, I don't know uh, uh, regarding regarding that. But there should be many uh, people uh, from from Muslim community who are involved in uh, in mathematics because uh, uh, for music for Hindustani music that. You have you should have uh, mathematic uh, units for using music. There were uh, uh, Muslims who were involved in in music and in various uh, in various fields. So I believe there are renowned, knowledge persons who were involved in mathematical practices from uh, from Muslim community. But I don't know. I'm sorry. To be honest, uh, I don't know much about uh, much about that. Thank you students for your active participation. So I think we have come to the end of our interactive section. So let me welcome Dr. Deepa Esnaya for vote of thanks. Good morning to one and all. On behalf of Department of Mathematics and Statistics, HHM SPB NSS College for Women, I take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to those who have supported for this two-day international webinar on history of mathematics organized by our department in association with the IQSC of our college. First of all, I thank our respected principal, Dr. P. J. Shri, for providing all the facilities and support for conducting this webinar in this COVID-19 pandemic scenario. Next, I thank our resource person, Dr. Prakash Vengideshan, sir. We are grateful to you, sir, for accepting our request for delivering a presentation. We are really enlightened with your knowledge and esteemed presence. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for this very informative and interesting session. I am sure that all the participants were benefited by this session. Next, I would like to thank Dr. P.G. Sharachandran, sir, former Deputy Director, Collegiate Education, for his valuable suggestions Toward the organization of this webinar. Thank you very much, sir. We are thankful to our IQC convener, Dr. Shubha R. Nair, for her enthusiastic support and help for coordinating this webinar. Thank you, teacher. Next, I would like to thank our respected HOD, Srimadi N. J. Sri, for leading and guiding us from the beginning to the end. We are much grateful to you, teacher. 
thank you very much a special thanks to dr jayalakshmi ji coordinator of the webinar for her wholehearted support and coordination thank you dear teacher my heartfelt thanks to our dear students for their active participation i extend my sincere thanks to our respected participants for accepting our invitation without your kind presence we could not have accomplished what we had dreamt for thanks to all the teachers researchers students who participated in this webinar and helped to make this webinar a grand success once again thank you thank you all and thank you all yes with this we have come to the end of a two day webinar section once again i thank each and every person who participated for their cooperation and patience have a fabulous day thank you all thank you sir thank you thank you sir okay so all of you have been taking feedback for अरे नहीं 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 नहीं